Hey, this is Materi, and this is the third video in the sound design tutorials that I'm making. Uh, this time I'm going to be going over filters and a little bit of routing. Not really the routing tab, but more of all these little sliders. So, um, I'll start with the filters, obviously. You have all these different types of filters. Low pass, which lets um, low pass. I'll give you visual representations of each um, filter the best that I know. So I'll just drag an EQ8 over here. I'll move this. So a low pass, let's take off all these nodes. A low pass looks like this. This is a low pass 2 and it just cuts off all the highs and anything inside of here um, inside this orange um, line will actually be heard so all this would be cut off and all this would be cut off um, the low pass 4 is just a little bit um, sharper then you have what a high pass a normal high pass you can see it only lets the highs through and it cuts off the lows. Same thing with a uh, high pass 4. Then you have an all pass, which is just all pass. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it gives you a bell in um, massive. Let me check. Yeah, you can see it affecting the uh, EQ. Maybe that will be a little bit better to uh, show. So I have... All this is taking up the entire thing, so a low pass 4. And what the resonance does is if I have a low pass 4 on, the Q acts as the same thing. So if I put the resonance up, you can see that it like pushes those frequencies right at the edge up. So we can actually see that being done. And you can actually see it moving right here. resonance up. It's really hard to tell with this wave, but yeah. So uh, that's a uh, low pass, then the high pass. We'll just look at it real quick. You can see it cuts off all the lows. Resonance does the same thing. Uh, all pass is just uh, a bell, which in the world of EQing is just this thing where it pops a certain frequency up and then moves it around. Your Q makes it tighter or wider. Um, now we have the double notch, which looks like this. It's just two bells, and they're, uh, they're like this. And they actually move at the same time, which I'm not sure I can do without doing this. Let me just real quick show you macro one map and I can go to four map it and then 
say just 300 and 600, uh, something like this. It's not exactly like this, but this is a good representation. So here's what a double notch will do. Just pump up two uh, frequencies. And now inside of Massive, I'll do it. So let me just delete that and bring a new one in. Oopsie, that's an EQ3. And here's the double notch inside of Massive with the resonance, which is uh, which does the same thing. We actually see how it affects the sound. Let me change this to a sine wave. Maybe it'll make it easier. Maybe not. You need something to really fill out the frequency. That's kind of better. Uh bandpass, which is a, uh, a low pass and a high pass put together. So you can think of it as something like this. Then they move at the same time. So if I move the knob, it would move like that. But at the same time. So, uh, Here's what it would sound like. And with this one, you have a uh, bandwidth, which changes the length between the uh, two nodes. So you can make it more narrow by putting it up. Or putting it, putting it down, you make it more narrow, which only allows certain frequencies to cut through. Then the higher you put it, the wider it is, and the more frequencies come through. Resonance just brings the nodes up to boost frequencies. Uh, band reject. <clears throat> it looks like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. It just cuts off frequencies. Uh, let me turn that one. So you can see how it affects the sound. It just cuts off certain frequencies. So let me do it inside a massive bandwidth. Uh, makes it wider or narrow. Resonance. Uh, a scream filter is really weird. It's like a low pass filter, but it also has this like scream knob and resonance, which make it like scream, I guess. That's why it's called scream. So here's just a low pass. So you can see just by playing with the scream knob in the resonance that uh, they really uh, like make your sound more distorted. One thing to note about the scream filter is that you need both the resonance up and the scream up for it to make sounds like that. So if I just play with the scream fil or the scream knob, it does nothing. I need to put the resonance up. Or if I do the resonance, it does a lot more. Kind of like a low pass. But if you use both the scream and the resonance, you get more like distorted sounds. Now you have, let me go back to the poly. You have a daft. Which I'm not sure exactly what the difference between a daft and a uh, 
normal low passes. Uh, someone could probably inform inform me and everyone else in the comment section. You have a comb filter, which is weird. It adds like a formant to the uh, to the sound. just a normal and uh, if you have everything down the pitch does nothing you have to put feedback a little up before you could actually hear anything in dampening or damping I mean so the comb filter is like the scream where you kind of need more than one knob turned on to actually have an effect on the sound. So now acid, which is another like low pass. I'm not sure exactly what the difference is between an acid filter and a low pass filter. So uh, those are your filters and I'll go over really why you would use some over another. Low pass, you can really take the highs off and it really dulls the sound down. It makes it a little darker sounding. So um, dubstep, classic dubstep wobbles. You would just put an LFO, which we'll get into later, on a uh, low pass filter um, cutoff. And you get this like nice dark wobble sound because it's cutting off all the highs. So like if it was all the way up, it would give it a completely different like characteristic to the sound. Then putting the resonance up uh, makes it a little bit more like it's hard to explain, but it adds like a water drop effect to the uh, sound. That's the way I think of it. It makes it more like a acid techno type sound. Then you have uh, high pass, which I really only use if I really want to cut the lows off of uh, my sound. And then I could put like a, a uh, low sub bass onto it so that I can actually um, like have it stand out more and it doesn't like make my mix muddy. So an all pass, I never really use double notch. Double notches are really cool. You can make some really interesting sounds. Um, it's really for, you can hear it, it like, just adds a cool characteristic to your sound. Um, I use it in a lot of drum step sounds that are supposed to be wet and like growly. Uh, Bandpass is one of those things where I barely use it. I would use it for uh, more of fixing up my mix type thing. Band reject. This one's fun for also like drum steppy sounds, but you can make some really crazy growl sounds out of it too. Okay, and um, Scream is really good for, again, like distorted sounds. I used to use Scream a lot for like opening, opening sounds. You could put like an envelope on your cutoff and it just like opens it up into like a nice scream scream filter so that's really nice uh, the daft I don't use comb if you're trying to make like old school or like that sick type of sounds I think comb is really the way to go. Let's see if I can... Not with this. It's, it's 
hard to not get so advanced with the uh, comb filter, but definitely play around with it um, later on. <clears throat> I wouldn't say maybe as a beginner, the comb filter is the best one to use. I'd say stick with like the scream and low pass and whatnot. Then intermediate is like the band reject, double notch. Then like advanced is more of the comb filter in my mm -hmm. eyes. Um, you can play around with all of them really and get some cool sounds just by playing around. But um, to really understand it, you have to play around with it um, one at a time. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go into the routing. So you have this very, very, very important knob, the slider, I mean. And what it does is you can see it says F2. And it goes SCR, uh, PAR. So by default, it's set to PAR, which stands for parallel. And in parallel, that means both filters um, affect all the oscillators um, depending on how they're routed. So let me just put a low pass and a high pass on just to show you what everything does. So right here, you can see I put this up. This is the volume for the uh, filter. So if it's all the way off, you won't be able to hear anything. This is the output volume. So after the signal goes through all this, it goes through one of these filters depending on which um, location the slider is put at. So if I set this one to filter one, set this one to filter two, and then set this one in the middle, that means I'll have a, uh, I'll actually set this one to zero, set this one, the low one to go to the filter one, the high one to go to filter two, then the low or the normal one, which is gonna be right in the middle, to go to both of them. So now if I play with this mix, which is set to mix one, which means I only allow the signal from filter one to pass through, I should only be able to hear this really low one, which is set to filter one. I won't be able to hear this high one because it's set to filter two all the way. And I'll be able to hear a little bit, half, half of it, of this normal one. So let me bring this volume down a little bit or the low pass is on. So you can see I turned off oscillator one, now you get to hear the signal. Now if I bring this uh, mix knob down, you'll be able to hear filter two only. Well, it'll gradually get into filter two. I could put the mix in between and now I'll be able to hear all of them. Uh, mostly this middle one because it's through both. And now each um, filter affects only one of the signal. It's hard to explain like so this one's set to go to filter one so this filter one will only affect this one and a little bit of this one. And filter two will obviously affect the one that's routed to filter two. Um, that's why it's called parallel. They work parallel to each other. So while one is doing something, the other one's also doing something. Uh, what serial is means that one gets played and then the next one gets played. So I'm going to just uh, hit new sound. And I could set all these to filter one. And I can set this filter one to filter or a low pass filter and filter two to a high pass filter. All the volumes are up and it's set to the serial. My mix is at mix one, which means I'll only hear filter one. Now, if I bring this down, let's say the volume is down on my second filter and I bring mix down, mix two down, I don't hear anything. I'm pressing buttons and nothing's playing. Now if I bring the volume up, you'll be able to hear the uh, low pass, even though all these signals, all these uh, oscillators are routed to filter one. So you can see the filters go through, or the oscillators go through filter one and then filter two. So I could put the high pass on now. Um. 
Now this becomes important when you're going into more advanced um, filtering techniques like if I have a band reject, sorry, a band reject and let's say a scream on the lower one. It's just, it's really nice to have all this. Really nice to have these uh, two filters working, working together to affect one sound, uh, as opposed to both of them at one time. Uh, so I'll show you an example of how using a ser or parallel is really nice, and one example of why using a uh, serial is really nice. So for this little example, I'll route one sound or one oscillator to filter one and one oscillator to filter two. I'll set filter two or uh, oscillator two to a sine wave. You can see it's signed by SIN. -S -I and now I have to bring this over so that it's to the left because SIN is on the left. And now you can hear nothing's playing from my second oscillator. So I'll bring this filter up and I'll bring this down to the middle. I can just double click on it. And now both of them are playing. But let's say I want to cut off all the lows on this top signal. I can do a high pass. And I want to cut off all the uh, highs from this signal, so I just get the nice sine wave doing a sub bass. So now I have uh, a mix that's actually really good because I have the lows and I have my highs and they're split apart to make the sound not muddy, to make it nice and uh, it fits well together. Now, serial is good if you're doing more complex sounds. I'll try to get something to work, but I'm not saying, I'll actually show you um, one thing that's really cool about having uh, the uh, serial filters. So. This one, I have my macro set up. Ah. With a low pass and a high pass, so. So now I can raise, like, uh, build up by doing a nice low pass in. But now I could also do a high pass without having to change the sound or uh, make a duplicate sound that has a high pass instead of a low pass. So that's really good to have the serial. Um, now, that's a pretty good explanation of filters. And again, you have all these boxes which affect the position of the knob if you have like an envelope on it, which the next tutorial will be about envelopes. <clears throat> so hopefully this has helped you and stay tuned for the next tutorial in the series, which is again going to be about envelopes and LFOs and how those affect your sound. Uh, thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.